Hey guys, welcome to Fafudge number 3. Uh, this one's a bit late because I had some issues getting uh, getting this recorded. I tried twice with my phone, but it doesn't seem to want to record anymore. I think after about 3 minutes of recording, it crashed and it wouldn't even turn on for about 10 minutes. Uh, so that, ha that happened twice, so I'm not going to even try on my phone anymore. And then I tried recording this yesterday morning on my laptop, but the it was recording at 480p, uh, for those who know what that is, so it's just a lower resolution um, than normal, and it doesn't look that great. And it also, the audio was fine, but the video just kept jumping and skipping, and it, I would have needed to resync it about 10 times or more probably over the course of the video that I made. So that was just going to take way too long. And so today I'm filming this on my my own camera, my Panasonic Lumix GH4, uh, which I bought from friend James down in Kos. It's a very, very nice camera. Got some good shots um, of the barber shop with it um, in you know, 4K resolution or in slow-mo. Uh, I got some shots at two and a half times slower than than normal. Two days ago, we, me and four other people from class, we filmed in a barber shop for three hours. We have a project for school where we have to make a three minute video and it was uh, Donna's idea to film in this barber shop, which has a coffee shop right next to it that is run by the wife of Barber. So it's a kind of a cool they both have a kind of retro feel to it. The coffee shop kind of almost feels like a, an American diner, like from the 50s. The barber shop has, um, is mostly brick walls and it has some like empty whiskey bottles and things like that in alcoves uh, in the brick walls. And it's just got like an old uh, vinyl record of barber shop blues or, or something like that, um, kind of sitting on a, on a bar fridge in there. and. Just some cool little touches like that that just make it different to um, any other barber or hairdresser I've been to. Uh, so we filmed just to, to ask a barber about, you know, is there a resurgence in men growing beards and what does he think about that? Is there a connection between people getting tattoos and people growing beards? Men, obviously. <laughs> um, and we filmed some shots of like his wife making coffee and uh, the two of them talking to customers and things like that, just to um, you know, add some flavour to the shot, to the video. And uh, and on Saturday, so tomorrow morning, we'll probably, me and, and Donna, because the others live further away, um, we'll probably be filming some stuff just around Mwollomba, like get a shot of Mount Warning, which you can see from Mwollomba, or just outside of Mwollomba. So we'll just kind of tie into talking about the location of the barbershop. So we'll do that on tomorrow morning. Uh, but yesterday morning, I had to take back all the equipment that I'd hired. Um, I was kind of the only one who had a car who was available to pick up equipment on Tuesday so we could film on Wednesday. So I had two cameras, had two tripods, had two reflectors, had a boom mic, a boom pole, a C stand so we could have the boom mic kind of held in place if we didn't have someone to do it. But my room was just packed with all this stuff and I couldn't couldn't walk around my room because it's so small. I was glad to take it back yesterday morning, but it took about four trips to my car to get all the stuff out and into my car and packed away properly. So last week, Steph asked me if I could have dinner with anyone, alive or dead, uh, who would it be? So I thought about it and I think I came up with two but I can only remember one at the moment, so I'll tell you who that was. Um, the first one is a guy who died uh, last year. Uh, his name was Monty Ohm, and he died at age 31 from a severe allergic reaction to a standard medical procedure. Um, and then he went into a coma for, I think it was, a, he was in a coma for a week, uh, and he never regained consciousness. Uh, so he was he was an animator at, for a company called Rooster Teeth. Um, I watch a lot of their content online. He also made a show with them called Ruby, 
it was kind of an anime cartoony kind of show, uh, but it was all um, computer generated. It wasn't hand drawn, um, and that was picked up in in Japan for distribution by Warner Brothers. So it was had like success kind of internationally. Um, he's from he was from America, so had some success internationally. So he's been creatively successful, and he from what they talked about him on podcasts or when he was on podcasts himself he had a big thing about being efficient and using time kind of to the maximum effect so there were times when they talked about how he devised a way to press the buttons on the microwave so it would take up a little bit less time so then he could get his food faster and get on with the rest of his day um, and he apparently he lived more or less across the street from where he worked, but he would drive over because it cut off, you know, 10 seconds or something off his time to work. So just a guy that was very much all about, um, about being efficient with everything you do, um, be it work or just life. And someone who just promoted everyone being creative in some way. Um, one of the things that he's he was often quoted as saying was keep moving forward. Apparently, he would say that like at the end of the at the end of the crunch period when they'd finish working on a season of Ruby or a season of whatever else, he'd tell the animation team to keep moving forward. And in the off time they had between between seasons, to keep improving their work, keep or keep learning new things, improving something about themselves, whether it's work or fitness or getting new skills or improving current skills. And just to, for, for animators, just to watch movies or TV shows or things, just to learn how things move and, and learn what looks right in, in an animation as opposed to just having something look a little bit off and look kind of clunky. Um, so... So the reason that I chose Monty at home would be because I think it would be interesting to have dinner anyway, since he's all about um, efficiency. I think it would probably be an interesting event, no matter what um, the conversation topic was at dinner. But also I think that it would be very interesting to have a conversation with Monty at home, um, to hear directly from him his thoughts about you know, cre being creative and and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's who I would have dinner with, um, if I could. If anyone wants to put a comment down below in YouTube um, with who they would have dinner with, if they, you know, anyone alive or dead, um, totally do that, or make a response video if you feel like it, or send me whatever kind of communication you would send me. Um, outside of YouTube and totally do that because uh, I want to hear what everyone else would who everyone else would have dinner with as well um, Yeah, so I think that's it for me pretty much if anyone else has any questions They want me to answer or just things they want me to talk about um, Yeah, get them to me in some way and I'll try and talk about them or it in the next video uh, Yeah, take it easy